All right, so let's do our last section on waves, superposition and standing waves. Superposition is just like we talked about for electric fields, is when you have two sources that create field at the same point, you can add them up. Same thing for waves. Two disturbances of medium, they're at the same place at the same time, then you add them up. In waves, we call that interference. Sort of the extremes are 2D, uh, or constructive interference and destructive interference. We've got a this this is a, a steel where you can see two waves approaching each other. Or we've got a, a a simulation that I've got in Canvas and in your homeworks. No, that's not the right one. All right, yeah, it is. I just got to change this. All right, so you've got two waves of tra traveling on the same string, for example, two pulses, same amplitude. As they go together, you can see they add up. You can go run it a little bit and slow it down and pace through it. See, it's twice as big. That's constructive interference. As opposed to if they're inverted and traveling toward each other, it momentarily disappears. Reset that and run it. Again, we can sh slow it down. You see, it looks like there's no wave, but you keep on going and there is a wave. So. That's kind of the two extremes. That's for wave wave pulses. There's a still life of that, and then you've got that thing to run. Now, uh, if, if they're sine waves, unlike the pulses we had, but if they're what we call harmonic or sinusoidal waves, these two are traveling in the same direction and have a phase difference. So they're going to get to some point at the same time, but they've got this phase difference. It depends on how they started. So you simply add them up. We use this trig identity of how to add two sine functions. And then so we get this. We're still a traveling wave. You've got your kx minus omega t. But you, instead of having just an a out here, you've got two a cosine phi. Remember, phi is a constant. So depending on what their phase difference is, that's how we'll determine what the resulting wave function is. Still sinusoidal, same wavelength and frequency, just a new amplitude. And of course, the amplitude then, how big the result is, is a function of that half that phase difference. When two waves add together to create a larger wave, they interfere constructively. The amplitude of the larger wave can be found by adding the amplitudes of the original waves. Constructive interference occurs whenever two crests or two troughs meet. So on the one we were just talking about, that's going to be when your cosine of phi halves plus or minus one. So that you get a 2a, they line up like we have pictured here. That, that angle, that will be when your phase difference is 0, 2 pi, 4 pi. Then when you plug it in, you'll have pi, 0, pi, 2 pi, etc. That's when you'll get constructive interference. Again, we've got that simulation. Well, we've got another simulation here. Let's run it. It's our sort of waves. And it's telling me to run it for 90 degrees. So here's the two. They're 90 degrees out of phase, and they add up nicely. Okay. And get, that's here's the sum of the two when you get constructive interference. All right. Destructive interference is when that phase angle gives me a cosine of half of it gives me zero, which is odd numbers of pi. The other one is even numbers. These are odd numbers. When two waves add together to produce a smaller wave, they interfere destructively. The amplitude of the reduced wave can be found by adding the amplitudes of the original waves. Destructive interference occurs whenever the crest of one wave meets the trough of another. So constructive and destructive interference, whether or not that they arrive either in pulses or sine waves, whether or not they arrive so that they you know, both increase the total or decrease the total. Depends on the phase difference. Okay, we can go back to this other simulation and, and do it. We keep this out to 180 degrees. You see it's flat. There's two waves there, but they're adding up so as to cancel each other. If you're in between those two, then you'll get you know, not quite your full 2a, and not quite zero. So we're, we're saying that, you know, constructive and destructive is sort of in between, or the two limits to that. 
and there's the in-between. There's a number of different ways that we'll talk about in the next several slides on how to have two waves have a phase difference that can meet constructive or destructive interference. Path difference, uh, traveling in opposite directions or traveling in the same direction but slightly different frequency and uh, wavelengths. All right, we'll see you in the next video.